Merry Christmas Eve, everyone. Uh, I have a little bit of a cold, so unfortunately, I might not be as energized as usual, but uh, I don't think it's going to get worse. It's just a slight little cold um, that I think is my fault because I went to the gym when I wasn't feeling well and it just made it worse and... Yeah, so my fault, but Merry Christmas Eve. Um, I probably won't be uploading tomorrow, so happy Christmas uh, if you are watching this tomorrow or watching this tonight or whenever. Uh, <coughs> oh, there we go. That was more of a choke, not a cough. But um, let's get into it. Uh, I want to give a shout out to all the Patreon members as always for supporting the channel. You guys are the absolute best, and guys, as always, uh, for watching um, and supporting and liking and viewing and everything that you guys do. Uh, and Discord members as well. Um, if you are a Patreon member, make sure you're in the Discord. And uh, let's get back to NASCAR Thunder 2004, the Brickyard 400, a race that doesn't even exist anymore, unfortunately. But uh, it should come back. And, and guys, remember, we when we say we want the Brickyard 400 to come back, it's not because it was a great race. That's not the point. Um, the point is, it's a, is it is still a, a, a monument, a, a historical race. Um, even though, you know, the racing wasn't great. But I do believe with the next-gen car, it would be better. It, again, it wouldn't be great, just because the way a stock car around Indianapolis works, it wouldn't be a fantastic race, but it would be a good race in its own way, especially with the next-gen car, I believe it definitely would be. So I definitely want that Brickyard 400 to come back. Um, way better than what the road course race is that they do, which just feels like a crapshoot and has nothing special about it whatsoever. The Brickyard 400 is special. Sorry about that little rant, but... Um, yeah, I just, I really believe it should come back. The drivers believe it should come back, and I think a lot of the fans should believe it should come back. As long as everyone knows, it's not going to be like a storm-busting amazing race. It's just, it's a race that really should be back on the schedule. Um, we go to the standings. We need to win it. Uh, I don't think we've ever won the Brickyard 400 on, on this, uh, in this career, so, uh, we need to win it because we're 157 points behind, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Let's go to the team management to see what's going on, um, here. I think we can do something. Yes, we can. We can go ahead and overhaul one of the engines, which I'm going to look at. Can't do anything there. Can't do anything there. Uh, can't, okay, I can't, I can't overhaul any of them, literally. So we're going to go ahead and just, I guess, how does that one not get to an 81? Um, we're going to go ahead and repair engine number 10. And then that new engine is coming, and then we'll see if we can maybe overhaul engine 11 after that. I'm not really sure what the situation is going to be there. Uh, we can go ahead and overhaul a body, which we will do. Get this to an 83. $800,000 just to overhaul a body is ridiculous. But uh, that is what we need to do. We have $2.36 in the bank. Uh, that is uh, it for that one. And let's go. We are on a good streak. We've won three races in a row. Uh, let's make it four. The problem is, obviously, you guys know, Brickyard in a game or in real life, hard to pass. <laughs> That's just how it is. It is hard to pass. 82.77 will be the tire grip and the and the tire wear. 81.75 for the engine. This is really the best engine that we can have. Uh, and for the body, it will be 81.72 um, for the body. A car rating of 81. Let's get to it. Hope, can, can Dale Jr. please not be on pole? Please, or at least put him in like 15th for once, like, please. Welcome to MRN's live coverage from the famed Indianapolis Motor Speedway for today's Brickyard 400. You can just feel the excitement all around for this race. Well, every little boy has a dream of one day racing here at Indy, and what an exciting experience for the rookies who are getting to do it for the first time. In 1993, Bobby Labonte finished second to Jeff Gordon in the Rookie of the Year battle. You know, that's a pretty good rookie class. At first, Gordon's accomplishments overshadowed Bobby's, but Labonte had been a solid contender for the title in each of the last few years. Something a little out of the ordinary in this one for Steve Park. I spoke to the crew chief this morning, and he told me that they just missed the setup in qualifying, but he does expect his driver to make his way up through the field and get a good finish without much problem. The 83 car has had a couple of incidents on the track with the 48 car. They've been racing hard out there, and that's to be expected, but they better be careful the recent battles don't escalate into something more. My hopes and dreams do not come true. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dale Jr. is fourth. Dale Jarrett is second. We gotta keep an eye on Dale Jarrett too, because you know he's 
he's up there as well. 40 laps, uh, so again, not a long race because it is a 40% race. So we don't have a lot of time to get to the front, and it's going to be difficult to pass. So that's the only worry. If I get actually a little bit of track position, I'm actually not that worried about the speed of the car. I think that will be okay. So let's see if we could just, again, stay patient for a little bit. It should be a little bit of a pack race initially, and then we're going to have to deal with a lot of blocking as well, so we're going to have to work on that. The amount of speed that we will carry is going to be ridiculous. Look at this. 200. I mean, oh my lord. If we stay in the draft the whole time, it's going to be very high. I, 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 I. <sighs> That's the one negative of running in the hood views, because you can't really see who's on your quarter panel. I didn't think I slid up, but I guess maybe I did a little bit. Uh, that cost us a little bit of time, but no damage. If this is the one race where, you know, we did DNF last season. I do remember. Did we? I think we DNF the Brickyard 400. I'm pretty sure we did. Um, this is the one race where it is definitely very easy to to end up getting big damage because of how tight everything's going to be. Hey, we're going to have to short pit pretty hard if we're going to want to get some track position. Just one at a time. Don't push it too much. Just one at a time. Nice and easy. Use the straight line speed down the straightaways and the draft to, to set up moves into the corners. That is what we're going to have to do. There's Kyle Petty. And then we're going to back out of it there. I mean, I, I hit the brakes early. I, I didn't want to get underneath uh, Barrett over here in the 57. But it's fine. Now we just got to make sure that we maintain. Keep rolling the bottom. The top lane is going to just keep pump coming backwards. A little bit of contact there. I actually did that on purpose. I'm not going to lie. Jeff Green. I did that on purpose because I knew I needed to get clear of him. Let's try to get underneath Casey Mears, force him up the track, and then just casually enter turn three. Car feels really nice. A little bit tight, center off, as you can see. A little bit tight. And we just nudge Casey Mears into the wall. I'm going to have to be a little bit dirty this race if I want to get to the front. Am I clear? I, you said I was clear. I definitely wasn't clear. Good thing I changed the cameras to see because I, that spotter said I was clear. I was not clear. All right. Let's see where Dale Jr. is. Uh, Dale Jr. is in third. Dale Jarrett is in first. Okay, just keeping an eye on those guys. We're going to have to win this race if we want to make up points. We have a blown engine. There's a blown engine. I see it way in the distance. Uh, so I'm going to just be very careful to see if there's a checkup anywhere. Nope, the blown engine has cut down to the bottom of the track. Who is it? It is Bobby Labonte with the blown engine. I really wish if you took the one um, away and that was an eight and it was red, I really wish it was that. But unfortunately, we don't get that kind of luck. My biggest worry right now is I'm very tight on exit. And if I'm tight on exit and I slide up and I get stuck to someone on my right side, uh, that can really end our day. So that's what I'm worried about. I'm trying to be careful with it, but it's just no matter how much I back up the entry, it's just tight on exit no matter what as soon as I pick up the throttle. So that's the biggest worry at the moment. We are in 25th. The packs are starting to separate. I'm going to try to get underneath Bill Elliott here. And then use the draft of Robbie Gordon if I could pull on through. This is not Bill Elliott. This is Jeremy Mayfield. Why do you have to make your paint schemes literally the same, Ray Evanham? Why did you have to do that back in the day? Um, they, he was Red Bull before Red Bull really came in. Uh, let's get into it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on. 24. I can't let those front guys pull away. I'm already losing the front pack, so that's not good. I'm stuck in this mid pack. I'm going to have to short pit in order to get back to the front pack. See how tight that is coming off exit? <sighs> Damn it, stupid car. Now we are seven seconds behind the leader. That is not a good sign. We gotta get around these guys quick. I gotta get in clean track. They're just holding me up. So I'm gonna try and get underneath Kurt Busch. Three wide. Oh boy. That was definitely on purpose. I knew I was gonna make contact. I told you. Not gonna be the cleanest driver this race when we really gotta go and win a championship. Somehow still no damage on the car, even with all that contact. But that did what we had to do because I had to get clear of those guys. I just had to. Uh, so now we can get Jamie McMurray. This was this will be pretty easy. Uh, Benson or, or or Ward Burton. I don't really know who that was. Just drove right into the wall. Uh, so we'll keep going there. Kurt Busch is right on my tail. We get the draft off of McMurray. We go. All right. Now this is the key moment of the race. Do we have enough speed to catch up to this next pack? I do believe we, we do have that speed because this is the first time I'm in clean track. But we got to get there quick because the draft means so much around this track. So let's see if we could do it. I got to make sure I don't hit the wall. That the car definitely is tight. I feel like I could probably, I could probably, you know, loosen it up a little bit. I really feel like I can. There's also another problem. Short pitting might not be an option because it's lap 10 of 40. Obviously, if you make it to 20, then you can make it on one stop. 
we can't make it to 20 because we are about a gallon short. So this would have been the halfway mark. Uh, we're going to be about two to three laps short, short of making it on one stop. But because we're short, if you short pit, you're going to give up the time that you can just take a splash of fuel in the final stop. So that's going to be another thing. I don't think we can short pit. I think we're going to have to carry it as far as we can. So that way on the final stop, we can take a splash of fuel. I pray to God that no one can make it on one stop. I'm very worried that they can because my fuel efficiency isn't the best. So <sighs> probably should I put the upgrades in for that. Well, we caught the pack. Now we're trying to make the passes and Sterling Marlin's providing me a little bit of difficulty. And then Rusty Wallace looks like he's going to block. So I can't get boxed in here. Can I? Uh, no, Rusty Wallace isn't going to block. Okay. So I just need to reverse side draft. Reverse side draft. Oop. Nope, not going to work. <laughs> All right, then we just have to do this the hard way and actually try to make him the pass clean. No, oh, God, that's close. We got it. We got it. Very, very close. That was very close to getting hooked, but we're fine. Now we get Kenseth, who's running a lane up. We're going to get that run there. He's going to try and block, but we're going to have too much momentum. And now I just need to clear before I get to the corner. There we go. Switch back in the hood view, and we're good. Crap, Jimmy Johnson. Ooh, is he a minus 60? I don't remember. He might... I might have to make him a friend real quick. Hold on. One second. We get around Jeff Burton. Just like that. Oh, yeah. Right there. Reverse side Okay. Uh, no, minus 46. We're fine. Okay, so he's not going to obliterate me if he, you know, if I get next to him. So we're going to try and... Yeah, no, no. Actually, no. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right, low on fuel on lap 14. I gotta push it all the way. I gotta make sure we, we can minimize that final stop as much as possible. Can we clear him before entering turn one? Yes, we can. Alrighty. We are in the top ten. That's good. I don't see Junior, though. He's not in my picture. Where is he? Junior. He's in second. Okay. We really will have to win this race. So, uh, I don't know what the gap is to the leader. I haven't been paying attention, but it seems still pretty close to around five seconds, maybe more, so... Uh, this is this is the important pit call. Short pitting right now would gain us the track position, but it would it would hurt us in the long run. I have to push this all the way through in order to to do the either two tires on the final stop or splash of fuel on the final stop. That's gonna have to be what's done. So, and I'm 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 definitely worried about everyone being able to make it on one stop, and I'm not. I I am worried about that. That's gonna be close. Let's see what the gap is to the leader, Dale Jarrett. It's definitely around seven seconds, I think. 6.4 so we have gained a little bit of time um while passing guys so that's good news no no they're pitting they're pitting they can't make it they can't make it okay that's good that's good ryan newman and ricky rudd are 100 percent pitting this time by they took that little uh line in that i know they're 100 percent pitting and i think dale and our junior pitted i need to take a look at this is that a red car that is dale earnhardt jr has come down pit road. Okay, so he's gonna go the short pitting route and I'm gonna go the long route. Uh, so it's two completely different strategies, but hopefully the five seconds that we save on pit road at the end of the second stop is going to be worth it. Uh, that's that's kind of what I'm banking on. Let's see how much fuel we got, 2.0. I think I can go one more lap. So we had two gallons of fuel at the uh, exit of turn two. We have 1.8 down the middle of the back stretch. I think I can go one more lap. So we'll go one more lap. Dale Jarrett has pitted. So the two leaders have come down pit road. 1.2 on fuel. Oh, this is going to be close. This is going to be very close. I might be running out coming into pit road. Oh, boy. 0.7 down the back straightaway. 0.6. I think we'll be okay. Even if we start running out coming into pit lane, that's fine. I think we've timed it perfectly to get one more lap out of this thing, which is fine by me. Now, where is the line at the Brickyard? I, if I remember correctly, it's early, so I gotta make sure I don't speed. Alright, here we come. I don't need to make up a lot of time, I just gotta be very careful. Don't speed, don't speed, don't speed. Alright, there we go. Okay, so we, we gave up a little bit of time on entry just to be careful. <sighs> Pit crew, you have been very good to me. I'm not gonna lie, but very, very good. We need... We don't need 15. We need 16 just normal. Just give us 16 normal. That's all. Anything over that, I'm going to cry. Because we literally can't afford it. We, we, we are desperate. We're living paycheck to paycheck right now, okay? We need 
A nice stop. It's it sucks. It's not good. It's not good. It's it's eight point seven. It's oh my. Well, that's that. <laughs> I don't know if we're winning this race anymore. 17.1, and we get held up by Jeff Burton. Thank you, pit crew. Thank you. You see how far Tony Stewart is? That's where we should have been. That just cost us a nice four seconds. Really appreciate that, honestly. You guys are the absolute best. Our entire strategy has been blown out the window. Blown out the window. The, the time we were going to gain on the pit stop, uh, on the second one, is now gone because of the pit crew. Just, they just gave all of it up. I mean, Tony Stewart, look how far away Tony Stewart is. You can't even see him. That's where we're supposed to be. That's the five seconds that we lost. It's over. It is over. D-O-N-E done. We are losing points uh, at the end of this race. And to make matters worse, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is leading the race. We are screwed. That's that. I wish I could fire them. I really wish I could, but I can't. <sighs> All right, well, every point matters, so we're going to have to try and make up as many positions as possible and then splash a can of fuel at the end and see where we end up. Looking at the mini-map, I'm aiming for the group of cars behind the... So you see, like, Junior and Jared, they're in their own little pack on the back straightaway. I'm aiming for whoever's in, like, third or fourth... Stupid curbs, I made that same mistake at Pocono. I was looking at the mini-map. I'm aiming for the guys entering turn three right now. Those are the guys I'm aiming for. If I could stay close enough... I think a splash of fuel will get us up there, but I can't be wasting time with Matt Kenseth blocking me, even though he's an ally, and he's blocking me, and he's holding me up, and this is just is starting to really generate the frustrations. He blocks me again. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, great ally system. Great. Plus 68 ally, and you're blocking me. I really appreciate that. Go to the outside. It's not, I should have just went to the inside. Just back out of that. Try to get back to the bottom. Just get out of my way. Just get out of my way. You're really starting to piss me off now. And now he's going to come back on the bottom. Okay. <sighs> Alright. Next time I pass him, I'm not. I'm making sure he doesn't. This is costing us so much time. Why is Jeff Burton bidding? Okay. That's odd. But you do you. Alright. Get out of my way. Seriously. Out. Literally cost us an extra second and a half there just trying to battle your stupid ass. Come on. Well, this isn't good. We're going to have the lap traffic in the way as well. That might be a good thing if it hurts everybody else. And I'm going to catch... Uh, this is... This is just going very poorly. I'm just... I am not happy at the moment. I am very, very annoyed, upset, frustrated. I mean... All because of the pit crew. The pit crew cost us this race. The pit crew... Track position was so important in this race. I made it all the way to the top 10, put us in a great position for the pit stop, and the pit crew throws it all away. It's just unbelievable, honestly. <sighs> we don't even have a lot of drafting partners to work with. I just got, I'm just trying to push this thing as hard as I can. Probably should have made the wedge adjustment to make it a little bit looser. Ay, ay, ay. A caution will be so great right now. <laughs> I need a caution. Uh, I wish I could bring one out on purpose, but I can't. Finally caught Rusty Wallace. It was really difficult to run him down, but here we are. I just need to make this pass. There we go. That was perfect. Fall right in. All right. Jerry Nadu, I need to get around you real quick. Thank you very much. Please clear me. Uh, that should be enough. Yeah, it's enough. All right. Come on. Come on. Come on, there we go, we're clear. Oh, don't let him cut back. Nadu's on fresh tires, he, he put it again, so I just gotta make sure that he can't get back around me. And then we have Sterling Marlin, and that's gonna be it, because we have absolutely no drafting help from that that point on. So, well, we could just stay behind Sterling Marlin, I don't really know what the best situation's gonna be. 12.2, so I've gained a second on the leaders since since uh, in the last like five laps, so we have the speed in the car. Just don't have the trap position. And now that we're not going to have any drafting help either, once I get around Sterling Marlin, it's not going to be a pretty sight. Oh, well. We just got to keep running. Just keep running, keep running until uh, until we get to the very end, put a splash of fuel in there, and see what happens. This pack of cars is being held up. If you look at the mini-map, the leaders have pulled away a good amount, but this pack of cars of lap cars and lead lap cars is definitely within striking distance, and that was my worst corner in the last seven laps damn it uh and we are catching them Let's get back in a rhythm here there we go 
So they're in striking distance. If I with the splash of fuel, I can definitely do it. Now, can I take a splash of fuel? That's what we. I don't want. I don't want to take two right side tires. I want to take a splash of fuel. I think a splash is 5.5 gallons. I think. Um, if we make it to lap 36, then yes, we can do the splash of fuel. If we have to pit before that, then I don't think we can. But I think it is 5.5 gallons is what goes in the splash. I'm not entirely sure though. We're on 3.0 right now. If we get to 36, that'll be coming to 37. It'll be four laps on track. So 5.5 gallons is just enough for four laps on track. If we can't get to lap 36 and it's not 5.5, then we're gonna have to take right side tires, which in turn will take a lot longer um, and probably not make up the time that we need. So. This is going to be kind of crucial on how far can we push it. 2.4. Remember, we, I, even if it means coasting into pit road, that's fine. I just need to go one more lap. That's all I need to do. Oh, these guys are slow, slow. Get the heck out of here. No, no, no. I can't be held up like this. Get out of go. Get out, get out, get out. No, no, no. Get out, get out, get out, get out. All right, there we go. We're through there. Okay. So let's just take a quick look. 1.8. This is going to be close. Do we, oh, man. Do we risk it? 36. If I take... I need to risk it. I need to. Even if it means running out of fuel coming into pit road, we have to do it. So, we're going to do it. All right. This is going to be the risk. I hope to God that we can make it to the entry of, of pit lane. We're coming 1.2. We should be able to make it. I should be able to coast my way, with my way in a pit lane. Take a splash of fuel, and that should be enough to get us to the end of the race. 0.6 down the back straightaway, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, <laughs> alright, this is going to be very close, let's just check up just a little bit here, just like coast in there, just try to save a little ounce of fuel, where are we at, 0.2, we're going to be good, okay, so, we did it, and now, let's get the splash of fuel in, let's generate this thing, in. oh, fuel tank empty, I'm trying to hit the brakes, hit the brakes, hit the brakes, hit the brakes, there we go, okay, uh, splash. That's good enough. And no tires. Where's none? There we go. Okay, 7.3. It would be like 10 seconds if you had to take tires. So, no tires, a splash of fuel. Making it on that lap was absolutely huge in order to do the splash of fuel. Now let's see if we can make up any spots. I saw Dale Jarrett there, so I just want to see if we can maybe get around him, near him. He was like one of the leaders, though, so I don't think, I don't think we're going to get Jarrett. Or maybe we did. No, he's right there. But that's one of the leaders. That's one of the leaders right there. Do we have 5.5? We have 5.5. That should be good enough to make it to the end. Let's see where we're going to line up. Dale Jarrett was definitely one of the leaders. If I finish in the top five, that's all I'm asking for, man. I just want a top five finish. That's it. That's Tony Stewart behind us, who we were battling with on the entry of the first pit stops. So, again, thank you, pit crew, for absolutely screwing me on that. Really appreciate it. Uh, let's see where we end up. We're currently seventh. Now we are in sixth. There are a few more guys on pit road. Third. We are in third. That is wonderful. I think Junior is leading, if I'm correct. Yes, he is. Dale Junior is leading. It's a damage limitation. I will very happily take a third place after uh, the pit crew mistake. If the pit crew didn't make that mistake, I'm kidding you not, guys. We will be right with Dale and Hart Junior for the win in this race. We will be right there. Just two seconds on pit road means that much. So, very unfortunate. Now we just got to remember, we're on old tires here. So, I just got to make sure we hold on for the next two laps. Let's keep this third position. Is Ryan Newman for position? Yes, he is. Okay. So, I got to keep Ryan Newman back. Every point matters. This is basically five points right here. We're going to throw the block on. Oh, man, I'm on old tires. I'm trying to keep this thing on the bottom. Oh, boy. Oh, there's going to be two laps worth of blocking. No, don't go around the outside. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You stay, you stay. Get yeah, in the wall. In the wall. All right, there we go. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to have to just keep him behind me at all costs. He can go. If he goes around the outside, I'm 100% screwed. <gasps> okay. Whoa, boy. All right. One. I have three positions right here. This is 15 points. I cannot lose these positions. No. Nope. Oh, God. Yeah, there's just no way. There's no way I can hold him back. There's no way. That one I couldn't do. All right, uh, that's five points. Just don't lose any more. Just stay in the top five, man. Stay in the top five. I got to put him in the wall. Get the hell out of here. All right, in the wall. Fuel tank almost empty. We can make it on fuel. It's fine. 1.3. 1.3. 1.3. 1.3. 1.3. 1.3. 1.3. 1.3. 1.3. 1.3. 1.3. 1.3. 1.3. 1
I just got to hold on just a little bit longer. Make sure he stays on the outside. Block Stewart if I can. Oh, yo, yo, that is close. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. Back to the bottom lane. Put Rod in the wall. Put Rod in the wall. No. It's 10 points right there, man. Damn it. Stupid pick crew. Shouldn't even be a problem. Should not be. I should not be fighting for those positions. I should have been with Jarrett and Junior. <sighs> Damn it. Walkins Glen is what I like to call a wild card race. This can definitely change things up, and I'm going to need it. Because we are back. I lose 30 points. I win three straight races, and I lose half of what I gained in one race because I finished fifth. Like, how does that make sense? Good lord, what kind of season is this guy on? Average finish of 5.4. This is literally 1998 prime Gordon levels of ridiculousness. <sighs> oh my god, you sunglasses fraud. Okay, uh, I don't know what to, what else to do. I mean, I finished first, 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 fifth. And in those four races, right? First, 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 and fifth. In those four races, I gained a wonderful total of... Of 25 points on Dale Earnhardt Jr. That's all I gained. After three wins and a fifth. How, what? How? What am I supposed to do? Unbelievable. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy your Christmas, guys. <sighs> we'll be back on this soon. Watkins Glen is a wild card, though. Cautions, weirdness, pit stops. That's a wild card. Hopefully, Junior has a bad race. Hopefully, we win. I'll see you guys later. Take care of yourselves. Peace out.